Hello, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning from wherever you're connected to. Welcome to Africa Elta monthly webinar. Thank you all for joining us both in Zoom and Facebook. My name is Irene Maganga. I'm moderating this webinar all the way from Tanzania. Uh, before we start, let me remind you to put your comments and your questions in the chat box for those using Zoom. And for those using Facebook, please put them in the comment section and we'll be following. I'm going to introduce our speaker, Martha. Martha Castillo is an undergraduate English language instructor and a researcher at the University of Guayaquil, Ecuador. Martha is also a part-time teacher in a bilingual IBMYP high school where she teaches science. With almost 20 years of experience, she has taught English at different levels and has trained several English language instructors in Ecuador. She has presented her studies in Europe, Asia, and the Americas. She holds a master's degree in TEFL and a PhD in education. Her research interests are educational leadership, ontological coaching in education, emotional intelligence, and collaborative scenarios. Martha, I'm very sure you are ready to start. We have 40 to 45 minutes for your presentation and 15 minutes for Q&A section. Welcome, Martha. The floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, to everybody here in the in the audience and everybody that is joining this session. Um, my name is Martha Castillo, and I'm very happy to be here uh, from Ecuador. Uh, it's 1 p.m. here, and I'm going to uh, present what I have been working on on the last four years during my uh, teaching practice. So here you will see a little bit of my background and in, in action, because this is what uh, we as teachers do. As, as I was uh, presented, I work as a science teacher. Uh, I'm a part-time science teacher in a bilingual high school in Guayaquil, but I'm also a full-time uh, undergraduate professor at the University of Guayaquil. So I have the opportunity to be involved in these two scenarios, general English training, and also um, this clear approach that we have in the school. So with this background, I want to introduce how this model um, caused that impact in my life and my teaching practice and how it started uh, like I said before, a long time ago. That's why I also included this diagram because everything flows, but everything flows in, in a dynamic way. So I hope that um, you get the idea of what this brings uh, today. That is a regular picture that I one got from one of my high school students and he asked me that question teacher, what can you see? So if you are in the chat, if you are able to type your answer in the chat box, maybe you can um, uh, tell me what your answer could be to that question. Teacher, what can you see there? Okay, so I will allow like, um, you know, like 10 to 15 seconds so I can read uh, your, in your insights about these questions. Because this is uh, an actually another, an anecdote that happened to me uh, four years ago with one of my students. Okay, then, um, yeah, a face, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can see a face, yeah. So I started with this uh, piece of paper because then the same kid just flip it. And then he asked me the next question, teacher, what can you see now? And then I noticed that this is a way that our students also see us as the ones that we can also flip our perspectives, our realities, 
and the way that we can bring something innovative, something fresh to, uh, to our classes, something that our students can enjoy. And maybe we can have also the opportunity to make a bond with them, just like I have with this uh, student. And actually, this is how I would like to start with these perceptions that we may have sometimes when we uh, discuss certain things in, in education that we can dis discuss and agree or disagree on, on some of them, on some of them. But uh, the reality is that it depends on the, the, the way we look for things. And this is the kind of perception that I would like you to please uh, consider for this presentation. Because during these years, like I said, we have been in this academic isolation. It happened to us before when we had like this perception of maybe I'm alone in a class, maybe I'm the new teacher in the school, I don't get the enough guidance, or maybe as some of my students in the university, I already finished my studies and now I'm the newest teacher in the school, so what's next? Okay, so we have now these two realities of before the pandemic, after the pandemic, where we were also in this uh, isolation because we were just in our homes like we are right now. And that is how uh, we can tell the story of what's going on. So in order to uh, start talking about this station rotation model, I brought some of the um, ideas from the literature that I read before this, about, this, um, about this model. So it gives us the opportunity to have these different learning opportunities for our students. Because then we can uh, reach their ability levels, we can make them practice in a dynamic way so the students' performance uh, can be better regarding this problem solving, critical thinking, uh, working in, in individual assignments, working in groups, working maybe with you in, in a smaller class size without leaving the class. And that is actually, I would like you to visually um, see um, in the next slides. So this module was, um, implemented in the in the schools of the United States a long time ago. So this is not something new. And it was implemented as a way to bring this blended learning. So that means bring in a brick and mortar class, but bring it, uh, uh, either a device to the school or having the practice at home. So it involves this uh, teacher interaction with the student, individual or group activities and also the technology aspect that was also included. What I found interesting is that in Brazil, which is also in South America as in my country, um, I found that these authors were implementing this module but related to English. What I found in the States was implemented in high school, um, in, in primary schools and high schools in regarding different uh, teaching subjects, course subjects. But in Brazil, the focus was on ELT, which I found interesting to know that there was a need to um, make a difference regarding the, the four language skills in our English classes. So this station rotation module is there as part of this blender learning that we are now more involved after the pandemic. And here you can see that this is just a slight movement from these brick and mortar classes to these modules that can be more flexible with these uh, aspect of online learning that uh, allows us to work in small groups, even though you can have a large class uh, of students allows you also to perform this hybrid way of learning, this personalized instruction, maybe with this focus on inclusive education, and I will explain that a little bit later, and this differentiated instruction that um, we can also um, implement by the time that we have to design and say, hey, you know what, I think that I like this idea, but how can I, how can I um, put it into action, okay? So I will continue now with the next slide. So this is how um, 
visually you can see the class uh, your class division so you can see there are these four stations so we have this teacher station that is the only station where you are there is this tech station uh, the one related to technology that I mentioned before. And then we have this either um, practice activity, which is independent, or you can also have this practice activity, which can be collaborative learning. Okay, so the idea is that your students can be divided in these four different stations. So at the same time, they are working in different activities. So if you divide your class into four stations, that means that your students will be working um, on each of these four different activities, okay? So that is a way that you allow them for a certain period of time to later rotate and go to the next, uh, to the next station to see what they have to do on that station, okay? So this is the kind of planning that you do when you want to implement this model. These authors um, suggested to start with this flip classroom approach. That means that uh, the knowledge should be started before, and then you can put this into action in these, um, in these four stations. So that is actually how I started in 2017. In, in one of my, my courses. So this is how visually you could see the, the laid out in your classes. So you have these stations there, and then you can see that you can have either, if you teach science, if you teach uh, social studies or any other uh, of these subjects that are to reinforce the English language, then you can have the opportunity to uh, present different activities. Likewise, uh, it is a group oriented um, activities that you give them, they will have an opportunity to work in a more dynamic uh, class, okay? There is this, um, but then I, I saw the reality that I have at the university, and that was a year uh, later, this, in, this piloting in the school, and then I realized that oh, there was something interesting at the university with this t um, English, um, general English training that we have for our students, because um, according to the law, undergraduate programs need to have um, English classes, English modules. So at the end, before they graduate from the university, students need to present or need to get a B1 uh, level according to the Common European Framework. So this is a challenge that we now have at university level in Ecuador. So I think that uh, that is also the reality that we have in some countries in, in South America, that that is part of the exit profile of the new professionals. But then I went back to the theory that I want, that I want you to uh, see here. And I have uh, this author, Paul Nation, and his theory of the four strands. And the second principle is the one that mentions the balance in the learning process, the, the balance among these four strands that I'm going to show you now. And I have also combined with Stephen Krashen and his fifth hypothesis, the effective filter, because no matter if we are in this uh, way of instruction, no matter if we are in this in-person sessions now, there is a motivation for students. We need to create this environment so they feel comfy. They feel like um, these anxiety levels need to be reduced. So they feel that they are in a trusted environment. And this is actually what I feel like whenever you want to implement something and you feel like you want to uh, test this with your own students, there is this sense of mutual trust because they also trust that you are trying to do your best uh, with them. And that is the, uh, the greatest feedback that you can get, of course. 
So what is what are these four strands that Paul Nation mentions? You can see them there. It's a meaning, focus, input, meaning, focus, output. So these are words that are related to us in, in, in the ELT world. Then we have this language focus learning and the fluency development. Okay. So what, what you can see here is that this meaning focus input is related to uh, trying to understand and trying to get this knowledge through extensive reading, listening activities, and all, everything that is related to the receptive skills of the language. So in that way, you can have this balance in your classes, okay? Then for the meaning focus output, on the contrary, is the opportunity for our students to uh, communicate. And so this is where we have this communicative language approach where students need to have the opportunity to um, interact with others in class through this um, role plays, writing notes, telling stories. So here we have the speaking and writing uh, skills that need to be present in our classes. He also mentions this language focused learning that according to him is one of the skills that I'm sorry that this is one of the aspects that is more visible in our classes because this is a, a, a focus on the form of the language. And that is where we have this grammar vocabulary, but the activities that he presented are regarding this reading and the feedback in, in, in writing and finally. Uh, when he talks about fluency development, he just he does not only consider um, writing and speaking, because he also consider uh, listening and reading. Why? Because there is a, a a way that these four skills need to be together. They need to be present, highlighted in the class. So students can practice any kind of activities where they can practice these four skills, of course, in this familiar level of language that they can interact. We can encourage them to uh, be a little bit uh, faster in the development of the activities, okay? So then I have a question for you. If I request your lesson plan, which skill or skills would I see the most? And this is a time for a, um, for a self-reflection of our realities in our class. So I would like to share the link for you in the, in the chat box. Okay, so I can share the link now. So you can also answer um, this question or you can also answer in the in the chat box okay so which of uh which of these four skills do you feel like is the one that has more presence in your um in your own lesson plans okay so, um, like I said, this is a time for us to reflect about our own instruction and to evaluate the, the way that we can also improve our teaching practices. Okay. So maybe I'll give you um, 30 more seconds. All right. So these also, um, makes us reflect on, on the kind of lesson plans that we're also designing for, for, our own, for our own students. So which of these uh, skills, language skills, are the ones that are more visible? Because the reality that we had at the university is the one that um, I decided that I was going to uh, implement the same model at higher education level. And that is what I'm going to present in the next slides. Based, of course, on these uh, division of uh, four language skills, 
Okay, so thank you very much. I can see some of the answers here. And now I would like to go back to my presentation. Okay, there. So this is how this uh, lesson plan would look like based on these four strands. So in, in these words, here we can see that we can distribute the four language skills in a balanced way that if we implement this with the theory that Paul Nation uh, brings, um, into practice regarding these tasks that we can implement in our classes. This is how we presented this and to the university students that we had, because I was not alone at the university doing this. So I had these uh, four stations, I divided them into the four language skills. So I, I, I took the station rotation module and May, uh, and made it combine with the four language skills. So in the teacher station, I was there, but I was there for the speaking uh, time for students. So in that way, we can see that we have these um, main skills in, in each of these stations. And there was also a sub skill that was also reinforced. So there you have an example of um, the first pilots that we had with these uh, free resources there and some of the ideas that students had to do alone because they were alone in these uh, breaker rooms because that is the reality that we had when we tried to implement that at the university after the pandemic. So we had the opportunity to use the platform that, that we use to uh, post the activities, to organize the, the, the classes, organize the, the groups into these four breaker rooms. So then you didn't see the students rot uh, rotating because they were actually staying in the same uh, breaker room. But it was you as the teacher going to each of these uh, rooms for the speaking practice. And that is some of the results that I'm going to present. Those are some of the um, activities and applications that we have used for some of these skills. I will be happy to share some of the links in the, um, in the chat because there you have these activities that are free to use. So these belong to this open source uh, resources that we can have beforehand so we can also uh, take advantage of the based on the reality that we may have and during the first um piloting with my colleagues because i had some colleagues that were also implementing this module then i i had some of these outcomes so students uh help, like to contribute with everybody uh, they cover more of the topics they had that interaction and what teachers say is that they like that more participation in the class, students were in power, there were um, students were alone in this autonomous work, while the teacher had the chance to uh, encourage students to listen and speak in a small in a smaller group, which uh, reinforced the motivation for uh, interacting that I mentioned before. So there you have some of the results that we had. We had that we need to consider the time for each of the stations. That means that lesson planning should be uh, created based on the, the, times of act, the, the types of activities that I would like to implement. I need to think about uh, the activity, the time, the main skill, the sub skills. In that way, everything looks like in a balanced way. So then you can present this opportunity to your students. So instead of having that lecture uh, interaction, you can have these smaller uh, groups with these opportunities for your students to interact in these different scenarios that you as the designer has to uh, have to create. 
So final reflections about everything that I have been involved in, like I said, during these years, is that the first thing, allow yourself to make mistakes when you are implementing the module. So, because this is a good way that you can also move, uh, implement, create, think, reflect, and move on. So it's good to have a good attitude and, and a good attitude, sorry, to keep it calm in the, in the beginning. Jeremy Harmer mentions that the best activity in the world can be a mess if students don't know what to do. So it is really important for us as, um, as teachers to realize that our students are going to be working alone in the other three uh, stations. So in that way, we can see this uh, student center approach, which is the one that they need to uh, reinforce. However, we need to also consider that the instructions should be clear and simple in each of these stations. So while they are in these breaker rooms, they can be alone, but they know what to do. Okay, so instructions are um, need to be uh, carefully um, designed and the language, of course, needs to be um, understood. Be flexible with yourself regarding the, the use of these modules. It depends on the reality that you have, and this is a, a goal in this, in, these, uh, in this implementation, because you can adapt this module, so it's not um, a really structured module that you can have. You can find different uh, other modules that you can also implement to customize to your own instruction. Okay, you can start very small and but then you can see the, the progress later, as I mentioned before. And then um, you can also go blended in a specific lessons or subjects. That means that this is not uh, a mandatory or something that you can just do in, in every day of your uh, in every day of your sessions. What I mean is that you can go and implement this module whenever you feel and think that that is the right moment for your students to be introduced to the topic, to reinforce the topic, or just to make sure that the formative assessment uh, process um, can have this valid module to be part of your lesson plans, okay? So, um, I would like now to, um, to express some other of my reflections that uh, you can now go blended alone. It happened to me in the school that the first, uh, the first people that helped me was the, the other teachers that were also teaching our subjects in English. So we can also uh, implement this module and we're able to modify it, adapt it and make it, um, like a better opportunity for, for the students that, that I mentioned in the beginning. And yes, it demands, it demands time and knowledge to, uh, to implement them. So rotation for summative assessment um, can be an option that I would like to present today in this webinar. So we can also um, take the chance to um, implement it in your own instruction if you feel like this is a, an opportunity for you to improve our teaching practices, okay? So my last uh, introduction here is what do these numbers have in common? If you would like to uh, say it in or, or, or write it in the, in the chat box. What do those numbers have in common? Uh huh. Yeah, I, I saw one of the uh, one of the answers. Yep, but you have to be all to be number one. <laughs> so that means that um, this is a, a good opportunity for us to um, to see what's being done in, in, in other realities and make sure that 
Uh, you also analyze, you self-reflect about your own instruction. You see the reality, you have what needs to be done, what's next, and maybe to take the opportunity to um, learn from other teachers. Like the opportunity that I have today to interact in this webinar. So thanks Africa Elta for the invitation because that is actually uh, one of my uh, philosophies in education. You always need to learn and share. So for me, one of the advantages that now I feel in this um, environment that now we have through these video conferences is that we're not alone in this, but of course we also need to uh, consider the valuable contribution that we can get from other teachers. Because then, like I mentioned in the beginning, we can only be limited to our own perspectives, to our own teaching practice. This is a way that I have been teaching for 15, 20 years, but what's new? What have you improved in the, with this situation? So what's next? So that is the reflection that I would like to, um, to finish my presentation. And um, well, thank you very much for being here. My information is, is also there. If you want to contact me, if you feel like you would like to uh, get more info about how to start working on this uh, based on the reality that, that you have. I have presented the two realities that I had in the beginning. And now I have this other reality, which is having students in video conferences and students in these in-person sessions. So I would like to stop sharing my screen now in order to um, continue with this uh, webinar. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much, Martha. Uh, thank you for your nice presentation. I loved when you said as teachers, we need to collaborate so that you can implement this model. So you finished just in time. Uh, so the participants are waiting for your questions. I'll be reading them from the chat box. So Martha, are you ready for the questions? Sure. <laughs> Yes. The first one is, how do you implement this activity in larger classes? Thank you. That is how, um, well, in the reality that I started with, I had 30 students in this bilingual school. That was my first trial and my first error. <laughs> because I had to do the math very carefully because you know that whenever you uh, work on seating arrangement and you really need to spend a lot of time. That's why I said that you cannot do this alone. That's why I had the help of the head teacher, the other teachers that were involved in, these, in this pilot uh, study because we need to agree on the format and the, and the presentation as well. So in, in the school, what I did is divided this, uh, I divided this class in these four stations, but I, in, I set one of these kids that had these learning disabilities that work with this um, monitoring from the consular department in each of the stations. So they were not in one station and they were not with a person that they mostly were with because in that way they will also give the opportunity to know the, the the other students that they have to work with and also to interact with them likewise at the university um we manage classes uh let's say 45 50 60 students and being the the biggest uh university in ecuador so that's a challenge because we have these different perspectives. We don't have um, uh, the, the, we have this lack of resources. So that's why for this idea, I recommended these resources that are 
available on the internet for, for us and for our students. And what I like about this module, because I'm still learning about this module, is that you can go more than four stations. So if you have a bigger class, it is you designing what's best for your students. How many other stations would you replicate? Of course, if you are in these in-person uh, classes, you are going to be with the same, um, you are going to be only in one station. So in that way you manage a smaller, a smaller class. But with the other sessions, maybe you can have two different activities to work individually. So you have two different stations where students perform individually and then some others that, like I said, uh, what I like about this module is the flexibility that it offers. So you can find different uh, diagrams uh, of the module uh, on the internet. So you can see which one can fit based on, on your reality. That would be my, my suggestion. So thank you, thank you for that uh, question. Okay, the next question is, does it require any transition phase from one station to another? Yes, it happens during the um, in-person, um, and during the in-person classes, yeah, the first, actually, I spent one hour, one class hour on getting familiar with the format, not only me, but also my students. So in that way, they know that they, they knew that they had to rotate clockwise. So instead of having these lines as seating arrangement, I have these mini groups. So the chairs were, uh, the seats were together in these small groups. So we had this drill before and after, and after I, I took this idea to the university, it was much easier because you know, the, the um, instructions were not that, uh, that not complicated to follow. But with, with these children, like I said before, we need to be careful about the instructions. Instructions must be clear. So in that way you can use as much space as you can. Maybe you can need to have some, um, of the furniture out if you're not going to use it. Maybe you can have a different style of sitting arrangement for one of your stations, but that's actually um, depends on the kind of activity that you are organizing. If you're organizing working maybe in a poster, like it happened to the social studies teacher, uh, the desks were together. So that way everybody was just looking at the same uh, piece of paper to work. Okay. So that is basically the idea of what you can visually do in your class so your students also know what to do next. Because after a certain period of time, then you, uh, you remind us the, the uh, time is over, time's up, so they need to go to the next station. And they can just read what they have to do there. So then they know what to do and they don't need you because they already have, uh, uh, they, are, they are already empowered. They already know what to do. And like I said, this is part of a formative assessment process. So then you can also collect information of what, how this process is uh, being considered in, as part of your classes. So we can also uh, reconsider on our, our own instruction. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is, if you have an exam class with a program to cover, how do you manage? Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't follow the, the idea. Okay. okay, if you have an exam class with a program to cover, how do you manage? An exam? Exam class, examination class. Okay, um, the idea of this station rotation module works perfectly for formative assessment, but for an evaluation that needs to be formatted, maybe you will have this standardized test that uh, all of the students need to follow. Uh, I don't think that this module would be um, uh, a good idea to implement. Because what you do in the, during the, the stations, your students practice. And you will notice 
you will notice because this happens to me and to the teachers that help me in uh, implement this um, this module either in a school or a university level what happens to us is that the groups that interacted first in the other stations by the time that they arrived to that station uh, to the teacher station they already manage the content so it was not just like a lecture it was just confirming ideas the concepts uh the topic of of the class so like i said it is a fruitful idea to implement just on a regular day that you may have in your classes but i, I don't see that and i have not read about cases of being implemented as part of an exam i see because of the literature says that there are some studies that says that implementing this module can help in the performance of the students but the only way that we can find out is if we implement it Thank you for that. And you mentioned the rotation model in language skills. What is the weakness of the model when you are supervising the group in each station? Okay, the weaknesses and can be- How are you bridging that weakness into your- Sure, thank you for that. Uh, when I share the module to my colleagues, the first thing that I that I saw was also their frustration because they knew that uh, there were some mistakes on on the first sessions. So I was there as a coach, help them, helping them to realize that this is part of a process. So that is the first thing that we need to understand. The first ones who need to be familiar with this module is us as teachers. And then it depends on the way that we would like to implement this module in our classes, then allow yourself to make mistakes because that's the only way that you can also learn what to adjust, what to consider, maybe reflecting about the time that you uh, organize for each of these activities, the instructions that you give to your students, because these were the two factors that we found in the study. Instructions must be clear so students know what to do. They don't need you because this is a uh, student-centered approach. And the time, because if you have one class hour and it will take less or more time, you need to be ready to understand that this is part of the flexibility. That's why I will not recommend it to be considered as, a, as an exam because some of the students may finish on time, some others may not. But at least they will have this different interaction. So they will manage the content in this differentiated instruction. So we, we are giving them more opportunities for our students to interact. Uh, the next question is, in a speaking class, how effective would it be to give instructions orally at each station? A station leaves behind one of its members to give the instruction to the next group. Okay, thank you for that question. What I noticed is that uh, the use of this module allows students to feel more comfy in a smaller group. The more time that they interact together through the stations, the more they get to know each other. And sometimes you may hear that they may be using their L1 because that is just a, a habit they have. And that is what I found in the, in the, in the module implementation that I saw in the, in the other, uh, with the other teachers. So we just need to be aware of that. But the time that they are in the teacher station, you are the one that uh, are that you are the one that are there for them. So that is really a teacher center activity, because with this in a small in a smaller class, then they have more chances to be to be visible for you. Like for instance, right now I can call uh, 
Robert, Veronica, okay, Kesia. But if I if I have them in in a group, let's say 10 to 15 students, then there's no way that they cannot miss the opportunity uh, to have an interaction. And I have some of them even open their microphones because they feel like I'm not there uh, for just correcting. I'm there for helping them learn the language, correcting things regarding uh, pronunciation, speech, and sounds. So that is the moment. That is a moment that we need to take advantage of because we are now dealing with 100 students. We're dealing only with the 20, uh, only with 25% of your population. So that means that is a quarter of your class size. So it depends on you and the activities that you would like to do with your students to have that interaction among them or with you that they may get the chance to interact at least in that in that moment okay uh, someone is asking how can we get more information on the model on moodle yeah the platform yes well, that is one of the platforms that um, I, I use. Oh, more information about the module. Oh, okay, more information about the module. Um, you can do a, a quick search on the internet, the station rotation module, and you can, my recommendation, do both, um, the reading and also the images, because in the images, you will see the different layouts that are available so then you can you can see which is the one that may fit to the reality that you have right now so if you are in a video conference classes like like we are right now then you can use the breakout rooms right or if you are back to school and, and then you can also use you know the, the furniture that 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 you have there or in these hybrid scenarios and maybe you, you take the challenge of having these two different modes of instruction so how can you manage that so this is going to give you uh, a great opportunity to implement this module uh, not only in in for teaching english which is the, the purpose of this webinar but i have seen this module implemented for math for, uh, for science, university level, uh, for academic writing. Um, so it depends on what you need, what your students need. And this is how um, I, re I remind this question. What do we want our students to achieve? With that, you can start thinking about um, what, what's next. Okay. There's a question that, which skills do you think are best practiced through this activity? Which skills do you think are best practiced through this activity? Um, what I, when I implemented this module with, um, with the four skills, I noticed that uh, having a large population of students, you are not able to know most of them. So what I noticed is that these collaborative skills were present there. So if you have a weak student in a group, then you can notice that the other, uh, the other students can help them. So what I mean is that um, it depends on what you design. If you would like to design a, a class where you can have these four skills to make sure that at least you have this 25% of that lesson plan designed to reinforce these skills. Trust me, they, they will learn from each other. That's why I said that since they don't rotate physically, they stay together. So whenever they have to go to the next activity, then you can also, um, of course, whenever I go into the breakout rooms, I never interact. I'm just there to monitor. And then I see these 
uh, this process. They need to manage their time. They need to manage the knowledge and they need each other because they are alone. Their teacher is not there. So the more familiar they are with the model, uh, the better they will understand it and the better interaction and, and performance they may have. Of course, if you consider the, the level of the, um, of the activities that you present to them, that's not gonna be a problem. But those are some of the insights that I have uh, collected during these years of implementing the model. Okay. Uh, the next question is, based on the low context culture, students tend to be passive and shy in the participation. How do you encourage that based on this model? Uh, like I said, they whenever they go to the teacher station, they're stuck with you. <laughs> so that's a way that you can also know them. So you see the one that maybe uh, have not interacted, so you have the chance to uh, make them interact. So you can encourage them. You can notice those students. So the more you practice this model, they will know that, oh, now it's gonna be my time to speak. And if you consider the level and also the, their, your own students' interest, so they will have the chance to interact, maybe through the chat, but the idea for them, uh, the idea of a teacher station is that they would have this chance to speak because maybe in a larger group, they're gonna miss that, that opportunity, right? Like for example, right now, <laughs> it's only Irene and, and me uh, speaking and doing the, the, the interaction. But if we have the microphones open, then maybe somebody would speak out. But some other said, no, you know what? No, that, that's not my style. I don't want to, go. because that is the kind of students we have, okay? So they will feel more comfortable in a smaller group, in a smaller class size, when you are there, when they feel this sense of trust, which is really important. That's why I mentioned that the effective filter, okay? So in that way, they feel that they can get a chance to practice. and maybe to make mistakes, but that is part of learning. And you will give them an opportunity to, at least during that time, to, uh, to interact using, the, using English. I'm looking at the chat box and I think there are no more questions. People are just posting comments that they find the model interactive and the communication. They are thanking you for a good presentation. Yeah. Oh, thank you That's everybody it. for your insights then. <laughs> so if we don't have any more questions, any last words, Martha, to conclude the webinar? Well, thank you for, uh, for this opportunity. Again, Africa Delta, I am very happy and honored to be here sh uh, sharing what I have been doing uh, during these uh, years of teaching practices. And so my recommendation, please um, take, take the chance to uh, give yourself the opportunity to, to share and learn, to discuss, to be curious, we demand, uh, we demand curiosity in our students, but we should be the first ones who need to um, uh, get to know a little bit about what's, what's going on around. I think that that is the reason we are here, uh, to learn something new, maybe to reflect about uh, our own teaching practices and, and ask ourselves, okay, what's next? Okay, I saw one hand up before we go. Attach somebody at HJ, if you can write your question on the chat box before we end the webinar. I'm not sure if you can hear us. Yep, and um, my email address is there as well. If you feel like uh, you would like to get uh, a little bit of uh, implementation of how to implement it. 
I'm very happy to, uh, to read your comments there and, and guide you a, a little bit. Okay. So he's asking, I think this is our last question. Is it possible while teaching to bring in all the four skills in a lesson? Mm -hmm. uh, the authors that suggest this model um, of the station rotation model, because this is a format that the four skills are implemented, uh, says that it depends on the amount of time that you design each of the activities. Uh, for instance, in school, it took us um, two to four class hours, depending on the workload that we had. And that is the way that students rotate it. So you can rotate if you have one or two class hours. Like I said, it depends on the time that you have and on the time of activities that you would like to implement. If you feel like you would you would give this uh, model a chance to be implemented also for you as a designer. You can start with two rotations in one period and the next rotations on the next period. So at the end, you will have a full uh, rotation cycle. So your students will have the opportunity to interact. Like I said, time needs to be uh, carefully designed in these activities. Okay, so that's a way that you can implement the four skills. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for being with us since the beginning till now that we are ending the webinar. So good morning, good evening, and good night to those who are going to sleep. I can see others are about to sleep. So good night, everyone. See you in the next webinar series. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, goodbye. Bye-bye.